What's up, Guardians? Charlie here with another Explaining Destiny for you. This time we'll be talking about the items in the game and how they're a little more complicated than they occasionally seem. Again, I've had more time with the game and can actually do a better job of explaining this because I've experienced more of what these things have to offer. So let's get started with the weapons first. Now, I'm not going to go over each weapon individually because these rules, generally speaking, apply to all the weapons. Just like in the beta video, there's primary weapons, secondary weapons, and your super weapon. And... You should all be pretty familiar with them by now. For primary weapons, it's scout rifle, um, auto rifle, pulse rifle, and the hand cannon. And all been retooled and rebalanced and have their own little special things going on for them, which is a good thing. And then for primary weapon or for secondary weapons, you have sniper rifles, shotguns, and fusion rifles. The fusion rifles have actually come around in my book. I will use them this time around. They're a nice lazy weapon if that makes it the charge aspect of it makes them just great against tougher stuff such if you have time to line up the shot perfectly and still we only have two heavy weapons which i think is a damn shame because i really would like more than just machine gun and rocket launcher but that's me so getting to the weapons first off all in-game weapons have a series of essentially base stats they all have an attack a rate of fire an impact a range a stability a reload and a magazine size so, attack is pretty obvious. It's the base attack power of the gun, not worth talking about too much. Rate of fire, again, pretty obvious. It's how fast the weapon fires. Auto rifles, high attack, high, high rate of fire. Uh, hand cannon, low rate of fire. Scout rifle in between. Pulse rifle, high, but kind of strength. It's a, pulse, it's a burst fire weapon. Impact is the additional damage your gun does after the initial damage. Again, hand cannons and scout rifles, very high in this category to make up for their slower damage output, and auto rifles and pulse rifles a little bit lower. Auto rifles have the lowest, generally speaking, impact of all the weapons in the game. Then next off you have range, which is just the effective range of the gun. Fluctuates wildly from gun to gun. Each one seems to have some stats for this kind of thing. I have not found that a gun with a low range can't hit stuff at low range, it just has a lot of drift to it, as would make sense. Like, it's not, you're not totally screwed with a low range for dragging your guns. Next, if you have stability, that's how much your gun wavers and bounces around as you fire. Again, pretty, if you're used to first-person shooters, pretty common practice, pretty common technique, pretty common stat line to be cognizant of. And then your reload, which is just how fast your gun reloads. Again, pretty normal thing. It's just reloading, after all. Of these base stats, the really the most important one in some regards is impact, because a high-impact weapon can just do some devastating extra damage if used correctly. It's why the hand cannons are so powerful, despite their six-shot maximum capacity. So then after that, a lot of weapons have additional little upgrades to them. So all in-game weapons have some type of damage, whether it's kinetic, solar... Void or shock. Um, void is the kind of purpley dark matter you see every once in a while. Solar is essentially fire damage, and shock is electricity. Kinetic is just normal bullets. I believe it's lasers technically in the game, but it's no pluses, no minuses. The three special ones have the added bonus and subtractive factor, given that some enemies are super susceptible to them and some are a little immune to them, which you have to be cognizant of. I have yet to find a situation where I've been totally screwed by this, so... I'm sure it will come later on in the game, but it's not the biggest thing to keep track of. What is more important is that some weapons, generally speaking, greens and better have a little upgrade tree to them all by themselves. And you unlock this just by using the gun like you did your subclasses. So in the case of this gun, I have a couple different scope options. A little special upgrade that when I buy it gets me super accuracy when I'm crouched. A set of uh, the damage booster, followed by a set of ammo options, followed by another damage booster. I've not encountered a lot of things above blue just yet, but I'm assuming the big difference between higher, different, uh, higher levels of gear is the more options that you come with them. In this case, I have these multiple rows. Um, greens only have three. They only have scope, ammo, and damage. But that's to be expected. The, uh, basically, the gist is... The higher the gear, the more options you have, and the more you can make it yours. Now, an important thing to note is that higher-level gear requires more than just a glimmered upgrade, which is the money of the game, obviously. It requires gun parts, which I'll talk about in a separate video because I found this a tad and confusing when I was dealing with it. So, moving on from weapons to armor, we're going to talk about the aspects of armor now. Obviously, armors have a general defense to the point of armor, after all. And then they have four little extra things they can add to your character, and they are light, intelligence, Discipline and Strength. Now, we talked about all of these in the RPG videos, except for Light. And Light is, in some regards, the most important and least important for low-level characters. It's important because for high-level characters, it lets you boost past 20. Light lets you add extra 
levels, essentially, to your character, and thus making yourself more powerful. The intelligence, strength, and discipline all just add to the, to the skills you already have. They would boost your strength, discipline, and intelligence ratings in the rest of the game, and they would pa- provide the passive bonuses to them. But on top of that, a lot of armor, generally speaking, green and better, comes with little added bonuses to it that you can be unlocked. In the case of this armor, I have an upgrade to grenades, which, as I use the grenades and they do damage, they actually boost my strength regen ability. I have an upgrade to the armor itself, and then I have a third upgrade that lets me just pick up more light, essentially. It makes, me, it makes my super move power up faster in an indirect way. So that's about it for this episode of Explaining Destiny. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs>